Hey guys, Nintendo here. Listen, if you know me, you know I'm all about weird and obscure stuff. And today we have a topic I am very excited about because we're checking out some of the most bizarre official Nintendo systems ever released. Now these aren't bootlegs or custom mods. No, every console in this video was either manufactured, endorsed, or approved by Nintendo in some fashion and was available to the general public. But you probably won't find any of these at your local game store. So, join me for a quick trip to the fringes of Nintendo's long and colorful history as we take a look back at five truly bizarre Nintendo systems. Alright, just before we dive in with the first console, I do have a quick announcement to make. If you've been following the channel this year, you'll know I've been working on my own game project, Carl. Well, if you're watching this video right now, that means the game has finally released. It is available starting today for PC, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. This game is a love letter to some of my all-time favorite classic titles. So if you're a fan of stuff like Cave Story, Jazz Jackrabbit, or Super Paper Mario, I really think you'll enjoy what we've put together for you. For the first week, we've even got a launch sale running on Steam and Switch, so you can actually get the game for under 10 bucks if you act fast. Not only that, but take a look at this. This is a very limited edition Carl plush toy that we're also releasing for just a few weeks to celebrate the game's launch. I can't tell you how surreal it is to have a character from my head turned into a real physical product. This thing is so cool. So if you like plushies and want to support the channel, that's another great way to do so. Links to purchase the game on all platforms as well as the plush toy can be found in the description, so please do take a moment to check it out, add Carl to your wishlist, watch the new launch trailer if you haven't yet, and make sure to let me know what you think of the game in the comments down below. With that out of the way, let's get started. First up on our list of obscure Nintendo systems is... The IQ Player. The IQ Player is a handheld version of the Nintendo 64 that was released exclusively to China in late 2003. Unlike the 64 you're used to, this system is entirely contained within the controller itself. There's no separate console or cartridges to speak of. Instead, the controller plugs directly into your TV via composite cables much like the similar plug-and-play consoles of the same era. But why didn't Nintendo just release the N64 in China as is? Why go to the trouble of making a completely separate plug-and-play model? Well, as it turns out, in the year 2000, the Chinese government imposed a near-complete ban on video game consoles, citing fears of their impact on the country's youth. And that ban was not lifted until fairly recently in 2015. As the story goes, Nintendo reached out to Taiwanese-American engineer Wei Yin to ask for his help in designing a version of their hit 64-bit console that would be able to skirt these new restrictions and be legally cleared for distribution in China. In the years since, Dr. Yin and his associated businesses have continued to collaborate with Nintendo on a variety of projects, including the development of peripherals like the Wii Remote. Instead of using cartridges or discs, the IQ player makes use of a custom memory card to hold its library of digital games. Players would originally have to bring this card into a retail store and download new games from an IQ Depot kiosk. That is until the IQ at Home software allowed for the same functionality from the comfort of your home computer. Although both services have long since been phased out, the IQ player has still maintained some minor relevance through the speedrunning community, as quicker loading times than the base Nintendo 64 have made it a tempting choice for players trying to shave off just a few precious seconds on the leaderboards. Next up on our list is... The Visteon Dockable Entertainment System. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is technically the world's largest Game Boy Advance. The Visteon Dockable Entertainment System, or as I'll refer to it, the Visteon GBA, is a combination DVD player and Game Boy Advance system manufactured for use in consumer vehicles. As the name suggests, it can be attached to a dock within an appropriately equipped minivan or SUV to allow the kiddos to face off in a round of Mario Kart in the back seat while mom and dad are safely keeping an eye on the road. Because this system was built exclusively for cars, it's believed that the only way you could get your hands on one was through a car dealership rather than a traditional retail store. And because it launched with a shockingly steep price tag of nearly $1,300, it's no wonder this thing didn't exactly fly off the lot. The Visteon GBA is exceedingly valuable and hard to come by today, but even more rare than the system itself are its wireless controllers, which incidentally is why I've only been able to show you title screens instead of any actual gameplay. Womp womp. But regardless, if you happen to find a Visteon GBA in any working condition for a decent price, you've definitely found a piece of gaming history and should not pass it up. Alright, moving along, next up is the Sharp Game Television, a CRT TV with a built-in Nintendo Entertainment System. This thing has been a prized collector's item for most of the time since its very muted release back in 1989. 
On the front of the base are power and reset buttons for the built-in console, two NES controller ports, and a cartridge tray. All of these components are functionally identical to your standard NES console, even down to the covered expansion port that was never used in North America. It's still present on the underside of the television. It's been estimated by a survey of serial numbers that as few as 20,000 of these units may have been manufactured before it was completely discontinued in 1990, and the number of sharp game televisions in working condition is likely much, much smaller today. Thankfully, I did manage to snag one for my collection last year in 2021, and at the time we did a major deep dive on this odd chapter of Nintendo's past. So if you like this sort of thing and would like to know more, feel free to check out the truth about the sharp Nintendo television. We had a lot of fun putting that video together, and we're even able to clear up some misconceptions and misinformation in the community about its release. So definitely check that one out if you've got the time. Alright, fourth up on our list is... The Shonen Jump Famicom Classic Mini. This is a limited edition version of the Japan-exclusive Famicom Mini system released by Nintendo in collaboration with Shonen Jump as part of their 50th anniversary celebration. Much like the NES Classic we got stateside, the Famicom Mini is a modern, scaled-down version of its big brother from the 80s. But this model in particular sports a flashy golden finish as opposed to the off-white plastic of the standard Famicom model. In lieu of the familiar list of Nintendo classics, this system comes loaded with its own set of unique licensed titles, most of which feature characters that have also made appearances in the Shonen Jump comic series. Granted, if you don't know how to read any Japanese, this system might not appeal to you as much, since a majority of the games do rely pretty heavily on text for their gameplay. But on the other hand, unlike the other consoles on this list, this one is fairly approachable for the average collector. The Shonen Jump Famicom Mini was released pretty recently back in 2018, and can still be found for relatively cheap, given its collectible nature. I mean, come on, this thing is just cool. Look at how tiny these little gold controllers are. I love it. And finally, the last obscure Nintendo console on today's list is... The Panasonic Q. The Panasonic Q is a combination DVD player and GameCube system, which, like the Famicom Mini, was also released exclusively in Japan. While much of the original GameCube design can still be seen in this special model, the Q is easily distinguishable by its shiny chrome-like finish, its blue LCD display, and the additional buttons along the sides for DVD playback. It even launched with an exclusive Panasonic-branded GameCube control pad. As with most of the other consoles in this video, the Panasonic Q is extremely hard to come by and very sought after by collectors, especially in working condition. Adding to its scarcity is the fact that the disc tray is particularly prone to failure after long-term use, and these things are notoriously difficult to repair. Unfortunately, this is the only system on the list that I don't actually have personally, but it's been on my wish list for a while, so I'm keeping an eye out. I hope to add this oddball system to my collection very soon. Alright, that's about it! Thank you so much for watching this video on five of my favorite bizarre and obscure Nintendo consoles. I really hope you enjoyed. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you want to see anything more of the systems that we've covered today, or if you have any other suggestions for weird stuff I should cover next time. If you like this video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Don't forget my game Carl is out today for PC and consoles, so please check that out as well if you're looking for something new to play. I'd love to hear what you think. As always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for watching and for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this one, here are two more videos you might like as well. As always, if you like what I do and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. And otherwise, I hope you look forward to the next one. Take care!